Welcome to Word Blindness, Dyslexia Exposed. I am Juliette Hahn. I'm here with my co-host, Brent Sopel. And we are here to change the narrative. We want to educate, but we also want you guys to understand what it is like to be dyslexic and how things can change. So join us every week for Word Blindness, Dyslexia Exposed. You always wondered why I did what I did and approach things the way I approached it. Yeah. Is that, yeah, so many people won't talk about it. So many people have just moved on or, um, yeah, like you said, you just told them move on. Okay, deal with it. No, no problem at all. But how are we supposed to help the next people if you're not going to talk about it? You know, like, you know, I'm Mr. Negative, right? So it's... No realist. But, <laughs> you know, I talk about the ugly stuff of it because if I don't, but it's reality. Who else is going to? Right. And the thing that I also think is 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 really important is that you healed, and I shouldn't say you're healing, but you're healing through talking about your story and yeah. all of what you went through and then the drugs and alcohol. And you know, so when good. you come out on the other side that you can go down and but help people, right? I mean, because it's like, okay, you know what you went through. And it's like, if we just can bring this out and people can talk about it and it is very interesting because now like it will be interesting the next couple of weeks when we're interviewing people, watching people and how, and I mean, that's one of the, th- and I shouldn't say love, but like you could tell people's bodily language when people are not comfortable and it's important. I mean, it really is important. Yeah. Yo, if you're not okay with all of you, you know, then, then what? You know, I, you know, I've heard that say. If you can't look in the mirror and say, I love you, you know, feel and believe it, then then you're not loving or not being loved the right way, right? So we all have flaws. And, you know, I want to like this person. I got this sad. I got the, we are, you know, we are, we are. You have to love it, you know? And that's, all right, I can't read. I'm not very good. Okay. And that's kind of the positive, you know, the positive, you know, I'm not good at this, but I'm good at this. So it's, yeah. It's talking about that. And the longer that you aren't okay with it and they are uncomfortable and they're squirming in that chair, there's something there. There's something there. Even if you're, even if you're successful, you're confident, there is the shame behind it. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about that. And I, I used to say like, not like that word. Like, I, I don't know. I kind of not tweaked me, but I'd be like, shame. What, what the hell shame? Like, you know, we all just move on from things. But then when you really think about it, <laughs> Right. If you really think about it, it's the shame of being like, okay, I've been struggling and I've hit it or I didn't really talk about it. I don't like how I feel when I think about those situations. But the more you can talk about those and then move on, the more you can then see the positives in your struggles and in your dyslexia. And then, okay, what can I do now with this? Because I've kind of shedded that shame. Yes, I had it and I sat in it and moved on from it. And now what's going to come out of it? Some of the most successful people in the world are some of the most insecure humans in the world. Some of the biggest CEOs, Fortune 500, some of the most insecure, um, self-hating people in the world. They'll throw money at them, throw this or whatever. They're always moving, always doing this, traveling, whatever. They hate themselves. They can't, they can't be alone with themselves because they hate themselves. I was in rehab with some of the richest people in the world. Miserable. You know? Right. We all have, we all have shame. You know, is it being a band, whatever, it's being okay with it. And we look up to um, a lot of the wrong people. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of money. Because some richest people are the most selfish people. They don't like themselves. They like the money. Yeah, and it's great. Money, but- money is band aids. No, totally. And so the, I want to actually kind of pivot this for a second because we've talked about defense mechanisms and there's so many def- defense mechanisms as, and we've talked about this, like in school defense mechanisms, like how do you get out of things, right? Oh, I can talk to this teacher. I can do this. Now, sometimes defense mechanisms, you become brilliant at them and they're actually really good as you grow in life. But we've talked about this a couple of times about as you've gotten older and people have gotten older and some of the defenses, right? 
drug and alcohol use is, is, is one of them. But then you kind of gone down and you've talked to me about like where someone can't sit and they overwork or they do this. And I think there was a time where I was like, well, be quiet just because I'm overdoing yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with it. Right. But there are things where it's people can't just sit and be, do you want to like kind of go down that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you can't sit and I always make joke, you know, now being sober, I got to play sober golf and you know, have sober sex. You know, um, sounds wonderful. <laughs> no, 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 but it's <laughs> feeling those feelings. So any any way that you cannot feel those feelings, is that working? Is that always going? You know, I've got yeah you know, a million friends. I got no, no, you don't. You don't have a million. They're called acquaintances. So you kept running. You can go, 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 running, running, running. Or people that I'll have a million tasks so that they only get half done. It's you know it's 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 zero or a hundred, yo. Know? Uh, and so is it food? Can it be food? Yes. Can it be working out? Yes. Can it be, it can it be working. It's, you know, um, finding ways, you know, going, you, you said it the other day. How'd you get around your test? You broke the lead and put the red lead in the pencil. All right. You know, there's it. Yeah, that, that was in Latin class. Yeah, <gasps> and, you know, it's how am I not going to go up there? And, you know, uh, somebody told me a story when they called up to the board, you know, as they were walking up, they hit the kid in the head so that they'd get kicked out. You know, Mm. Um, it, it's all those little things, um, in the boardroom, you know, somebody's going to ask me to write up, you know, hockey. I've never, I was never get up on that board. I was always making sure it didn't land on me. You know, is that moving? Is that sliding? Is it standing on my head? Um, is that, you know, certain people that, that my names, you know, I think people are assholes, you know, kind of attacking people, um, you know, in, in media or social media, no, it's not attacking. It's controlling where that goes. Because mm. you know, we got to sit back and how are we going to fake it? You know, how many times you're writing a sentence, you can't spell that word. Now you got to figure out how to use a, a different word to, you know, spend 10 minutes trying to write that sentence. I don't know how to spell that word. So I'm going to, you know, think yeah, of another thousand word. Thousand times a day. Yeah. Thousand day. times a day. Yeah. So these are all, you know, defense mechanisms of, uh, and, and the list, you know, list goes on. But the biggest thing is that we all have trauma, every, every single one of us. And it's all major trauma to each and one of us. It's our own. Mm -hmm. But if we don't go and handle it and be okay with it, you know, in, we've all had some, there's been some gnarly shit to happen to people. But we can't go and change it. But if we don't go and deal with it, and the new, whoever, whatever happened, that new you, how, whatever that means, you got to be okay with it. If you don't go, I call, I call it clean out the closets. And you know, there's a dragon in there. When that dragon comes out, roars his head bigger, deeper, harder, stronger each and every time. And living with that in you and that fear. Like somebody tried it the other day at my golf event. Somebody handed me a non-alcohol beer. I'm like, nope. They're like it's not an alcoholic. I'm like, yeah, no. Uh, um, it's too close. It's a trigger for me. Right. I have one. You'll never see me again. Bye bye. Promise it's you. The taste. Right. Oh. Right. 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 You know. So there's a million different types of defense mechanisms. You know, relationships. You know, how many times it's. <laughs> Uh -huh, I'm not feeling well, or I'm sick, or I'm tired, or, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's a million of them. It's just finding out and seeing them and talking through them. Because if you don't talk through them, they're not going away. And, you know, there's a reason why in some therapy is writing. It doesn't have to be sentences, periods, spell right, just... It gets it out. Yeah. Before you snap, lose your mind, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's it's not good. No, and and it, you know, when we talk about it, because again, anyone that's listening to this, whether you're dyslexic or not, right? As Brent said, we all have our traumas, whether you, you know, grew up in, in the white picket fence, right? You think you grew up in the white picket fence. There's 
there's traumas everywhere. And again, big or small, they're yours and it's how you handle them. But a lot of times it's like not like I brought myself back as you were talking, like brought myself back to the classroom, right? And and as you said, how you would get out of so many different things so you didn't have to go and write on the board or stand or be asked that math, math question or go up and have to solve the math question. I mean, oh my God, I, I literally, as you were saying that, I was like, I think I'm going to throw up. And it is those things. So again, for the teacher or the parent to think about this is you don't want to be found out. That's the last thing you want to do is be found out because then it's like, wait, I am dumb because I can't do this. But again, it goes back to learning styles, finding out if you have learning disabilities and all that. And even when you find out, you still like if you have a teacher that's just a mean teacher or a mean person or someone you're in a boardroom or you're in in somewhere and someone just is not thinking of anyone else because they have their own traumas that they haven't dealt with. And you're called out. I mean, I can't even that's... think about how many times in at work. I mean, when I, <laughs> and those are usually first... the meanest people are the usually, again, the most, most insecure, you know, you got that yes. the mean girls in high, in, in high school, because they're, the, they're most the most insecure. Yeah. They're, they're the ones that have the most shit. So it's <sighs> consider the source sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, some, who was I saying the other day? Somebody's like, you know, this guy cut me off. And I called the company. I'm like, all right, asshole. Do you think he woke up and said, I'm going to go and find him and I'm going to cut him <laughs> off? No. What no. happened? You know, you know, for for me, you know, last four or five days, I know three or four friends that have had to put their, dog, their dogs down. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you know that? We don't know what goes on inside other people's homes. And we judge and we critique and we have no fucking idea. And it's, 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 it's really, you know, it's really amazing what people think, you know, like, you know, myself, people would have no idea. No idea. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a scary motherfucker. They all think, but they have no idea what's going on in my life. Not, not a clue. But you can judge me. No, and, sure. Go ahead. But you're also one of the kindest people and the nicest people. Um, and people don't allow themselves to see that because, right, they look, okay, oh, you were in the league for 18 years. You have this, you're this, you're that guy. No. And, and it's, again, where people can't see, get past their own traumas to be thinking about others. And this is what it's a, you know, trigger for so many people. As you said, the driving. There's, so, there's many times where I've had to like pause myself. Right on the like, gas okay. <laughs> Actually, you would have been so proud of me the other day. I filled up at 30 when I was at 30 miles. Um, I was like, I'm going to wow. go to the gas station. Yeah, it was the last time you're like, yeah, I'm rolling in. It's a zero miles on my car. I go, oh. oh, I'm the worst. I am the worst. I have, I, I, I feel like it's a waste of time, but yes. And then the alternative is when you run out of gas. It's yeah, a waste more. of time when you run out of gas and you had to spend three more hours on the side of the road. Okay. <laughs> 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 I like to live adventure. Um, yeah. No, but it's but, but you know, it, you're an example. You know, you know, we talk about you know your traumas. Obviously, with school, right? You know, we talked about this. I think last time is you know, you, every year you think you're you know you're over and and Ugh. you know go to school. The kids go back to school, and it's that first week, ten days, two weeks is you know it's a shit show because you're reliving it and. You know, Wednesday at, at my golf event, you know, I had Ian come up and speak, and he was talking about grade three um, spelling bee. You know, another one of my buddies is a Marine, 18 years long sniper. He went and grabbed a drink because he wanted to go and fucking kill his teacher because the instant yeah. anger came back, you know, because of those traumas that hasn't dealt through it, right? You know, I remember grade three, I threw a desk at a kid. Yeah, and I think grade back. three was well, and it does. And um, I want you to talk a little bit about your event because I know that, that you had it was such an, a special thing. But I do want you to talk a little bit about it because this is um, what you're doing in in this world is great. And again, all these conversations, all these things, and we've talked about this many times on the podcast, is that we will discuss things and it's like, you know what, we need to touch on that. And that's where the defense mechanisms came in because we all have them again, mm-hmm. whether you struggled, whether you're not, whether whatever level you did, we all have them. And to kind of acknowledge them is really important because you're just going to heal it and be a better person for yourself, for your family, for, you know, people that you work with, whatever it is. But the, 
I mean, de- defense mechanisms can go so deep oh. and you can get so, so into them that, you know, you, you don't know how to get yourself out of there. I mean, and, and when we talk about them, I always think I'm like, okay, what are some of my, I guess, defense mechanisms? And you think, oh, I've dealt with this. And as you said, when school starts, my oldest just came home and uh, I mean, he just texted me and he's like, mom, the, our essay, I need that. I need like my, my college essay. I need to do this. And I, I paused and I said, if they're making you stressed because everyone's talking about, right. Go, you know, applying to college. I was like, take a breath. You have it done. I think there's like one more edit that needs to be done on it. You and I will work on it this weekend or, or the, tonight, but do not let the school stress you out. Yeah, and I'm- and I, but, th- but but that actually, I had to, when I said that to him, I had to remind myself too, because again, that's all that's being talked about right now is like, oh my God, do you have all, th- do you have all this? Do you have all that? Do you have all that? And it brings me back <laughs> to when I was a senior <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. See, I, Deep breath. There was not I an option. I didn't have to worry about that. Not an option. This kid ain't going anywhere for school, but it's. Well, you, but you were going into, like, I'm sorry, you were going into league and you were trying to go to be, become a professional athlete. There's a fucking ton of stress there. I mean, Jesus Christ. Well, there's no stress. Again, like, you, writing articles tell you how much you suck. There's no stress. It's awesome. It's great. You know, <laughs> every single person in this world has trauma. We've all had stuff. But we always talk about helping people. People don't help. And I remember a friend of mine, you know, she was in Florida. She had a gas station. A woman dropped, you know, was filling up gas. She was trying to help this woman on the ground for 30 minutes in front of a gas station. Nobody stopped. Like, we are some yeah. of the oldest, you know, um, selfish people. It's, you know, I just don't understand how you think you're better. We all put our pants on the same way. And just because you work here or do that, you're no better. We all go to bed. We all wake up. We all cut ourselves. We all have a heart. Like, and those, you know, we get hardened with things that happen to us, but you give off of what, you know, you, you attract what you get off, give off. So those defects, mm-hmm. them, if you don't fix them and heal them and understand them and be okay with them, um, it, it keeps going, you know, and my golf event, you know, I had one of the guys, yeah, you know, I just found out, you know, I'm bipolar. It makes sense. So when we're talking, I'm like, you need to figure out what those uh, triggers are. Is it eating chocolate? Is it, eating, you know, just, you know, around me, same right. thing, but so that you can be aware of it. So it doesn't lead you somewhere. It's like, ah, good point. Well, you because know. it's the stuffing. I mean, and that's the thing. And when you find things out again, it's, it's this, and, and my, and my, my family, like literally they'll be like, Oh my God. Cause I'm like, wait, are you stuffing this? You need to figure it out how to get it out because oh, you gotta get a, you, you gotta get a Turkey. You gotta have a Turkey somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, if you stuff, it's coming out somewhere. And I say that all the time. I'm like, okay, you might be having a moment, but if you do not figure it out, it's going to, it's going to come out sideways in a, not a good way. And you have, you cannot stuff. You cannot wow. fucking stuff. And I'll give you, you know, you, first responders. Yeah. They, I don't know. They, they, you, know, you know, police, fire, EMS, some of the biggest, you know, here goes along with, you know, the people that fight for our country, you know, they're taught in academy, you know, bury it, bury it. You no, know, you got to bury it, you know, for the day, get through your shift where you're doing you know, the, the, the disrespect we show those people, you should fucking see the things they see. No, oh, yeah. Can't even. I, 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 I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to open that, but we all have it. Like we, you know, stuff, stuff, you know, down, down. You've only got so much room in you. How big is, is it this much? Each person's different. Is it this much? Is it this much? I always say, you know, people always say God only gives you, you know, some what you can handle. We can handle. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different, right? And then you hit that, and then it's, are you, yo, know, I knew so and so. He just went nuts, or she went. Nuts. Well, how we get or, there? Right, or someone killed themselves, or yeah. whatever. And so that's it's important. And again, this is where I'm. Um, Look, I'm going to tie it all together. Um, Look at you. How, <laughs> but this is why it's so important for the neuropsych in schools. To think, as you said, the kid that would go when they got called on the board and hit would hit someone in the back of the head. Okay, now a teacher that is intuitive or a person that is intuitive can say, okay, you know, he's done that a couple of times. 
let me pull him aside and see if everything's okay. Now, is that kid maybe going to tell you? No, but let's, let's keep an eye on that. Okay. Let's, let's see what they're, am I going to keep continue to call him up? So he continues to hit people in the head to can you get kicked out? No, that kid wants to get away. They want, you know, there's again, the kid that constantly is going to the nurse, right? Oh, I think I, oh, I cut myself. You know, I, I pulled a piece of skin. I have my, my fingers bleeding. I need to go to the nurse. All these different things. If we could just think a tiny bit outside the box, a little bit, like literally even a centimeter outside the box, you could see a bigger picture of what's going on with someone and, and, and be there to maybe be the support or help or, Hey, how you doing? Everything okay? Like just ask that and really mean it. Huh. <laughs> That's hard though. Don't you know that? <laughs> no, because I don't find that hard. But yes, I know. I know that was sarcastic. <laughs> but people find that hard because they don't. They don't. They can't get past their own shit. It, you know, and you just said, you know, you said outside the box. To me, that's not outside the box. Like, no, I if know. There, if, if there's something that's repetitive, why? I'll give, I'll give you an example. Saturday, I pull in the parking lot, rank and. One of my kids is having a meltdown. My mom's like, you know, I don't want to go to practice. I'm like, okay. Don't, you know, I said, he's crying. I'm like, crap, down. All right, let's go to my office. I was down there. I'm like, sit down. Sit down. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Some days I don't want to go to practice. I'm like, you know, guess what? Me too. And I'm like, some days I don't want to either. I said, but that's okay. Um, if, you know, there's times where you don't want to come practice, you want to build Legos or play soccer, no problem at all. But you know what you got to do? You got to tell your mom and dad, because you remember what class I failed in school. He said, no, I don't remember. I said, mind reading. So you've got to tell your mom and dad so they can tell me, because I can't read your mind. And I said, since you're here, why don't we have practice? And he's like, well, well next week, well, maybe I miss one. I'm like, ah, we'll worry about it then. On the ice, no problem. All good. To me, that's not outside the box. No, that's being a human. Us, there's days we don't want to go to work. Great. Like, so... That's not, to me, what you yeah. just said is not outside the box. If there's something that happens repetitive, there's a kid, you know, all right, let's just, it's. But that's, again, people are not out there, as you said, to help. And that's one of the things, again, that people wouldn't ever see that that's something that you do. And especially what you're doing with your program and the charity and stuff, you're, you're for helping others so they don't go through what you went through. Yeah, that's that's I you know I never want a kid to feel the way I do every day. You know, um, I'm misunderstood every day. Um, a lot of people don't like me. Don't give a shit. But you know, like at the rink or at school, or if you're not for the kids, ha, look the fuck out because you're not gonna like what's coming. Because it's not about me; it's about them. And that's why I tell my story because that story is not, you know, when I share these things, it's not about me. It who, who, it's who hears it. It's, that, it's for that kid. It's that kid of me that's sitting in a classroom right now, miserable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have three of them sitting in school right now. Oh. Yeah, see, I'm, uh, I'm old. I'm past that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm older than you, so fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> you just decided to have babies when you were a baby. <laughs> get in, get out. <laughs> Literally. No. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean that it, it is. It's it it is. Uh, I mean, it's something that people need to think about and and challenge themselves because you're right. It's not thinking out of the box, but for a lot of people, it is really thinking out of the box because they don't know how to get you know, out from under their own two feet to think about anyone else. And, you know, it's as you just was, was talking about, there was the other day I was driving in town and I noticed this woman, she was like going, she was older and she seemed like she was limping and she was going like this. And I was like, she had very nice clothes on, but her knees were muddy. And I was like, I think she fell. So I pulled over and I, you know, people are beeping at me and I'm like, just, you know, everyone pause. Um, I pulled over. So then no one would beep at me. And I just said to her, you know, are you okay? And she looked at me. She's like, no, I fell. And I said, oh my gosh. I said, you know, I, can I drive you home? I said, I, I promise I'm not a serial killer. <laughs> you can take a picture of my license plate. Um, but like, you, I, you look like you're struggling. Yeah. And she was like, no, I'm okay. And then she went to take a step. She goes, you know what? 
that would actually be great. And I drove her home and I was telling a a friend of mine and they, well, I was telling a friend of mine and they were like, Oh, how did you even notice? I'm like, what do you mean? How did I notice? I, she was walking in front of me and I was seeing that she was limping. I noticed that her clothes were dirty. So I put two and two together that she fell, but it's not. And I don't think, Oh, I'm so nice. I, I am nice, but like, do you know what I mean? I don't like think that that I went above and beyond. I noticed because I wasn't in my own head thinking about my own shit. Do I have my so own shit? So when you fell, yes. would you like someone to help you? Like it, exactly. And it, and I said to her, I go, I really hope that you know there was was there people around? And she said, no, there was no one. Because I said to her, did people just walk by you as you fell? Because then I was going to get angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she's like, no, no, no. There, it was, it was like I came off the train and there was like an area. She's like, no. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, but. But it is those things. It is those things. And that's what we need as parents to also teach our kids. I mean, I said this to my kids and we've talked about this. I always say like, look around. If someone need, like looks like they're just, hey, can I help you? Like it's, it's, it, it's so bizarre to me that people wouldn't do that. Like it's really bizarre and sad to me. But there are a lot of people like us out there. But you do have to look sometimes for them. You know, um, but if the roles were reversed, you know, and, and everybody's like, uh, you know, if you fell, you'd, you want somebody there. Okay. You know, it's funny how the roles reversed, you know, mm-hmm. it's, you know, yes, there is absolutely, there's, there's more, um, doing the right thing or going, you know, doing something like that. Um, sometimes isn't easy. You know, you, you pull out, get your car, you know, but you change, you know, you don't know what happened. You don't know no, if and she was medical. Yeah. And she was right. And she was an older woman. And I, you know what? I was on my way to my workout. Did I miss my workout? I was five minutes late, but am I always five minutes late? <laughs> I am. I happened to be on time that day. <laughs> so it was, but it was, you know, it was one of those things that I'm like, I wasn't going to drive past and just, and go past. It was like, you know what? Let me see if she's okay. She's because okay. You don't yeah. know. And I say this all the time. You know, we'll talk about she's dyslexia awareness month. You have no idea what, you know, um, is going on. Somebody so, uh, uh, a good morning. Uh, how you doing? You okay? Might save somebody's life. Might change, change yeah. the trajectory. I mean, really, it's, and it's really, it's. That's it. It's not and hard. it feels it's... actually nice, right? Doesn't it feel nice to do it and say, someone say to you, you know what? That really meant a lot to me. Thank you. You know, and that's why I always, you never know. You know, you got the you know, suicide hotline number, which is a bunch of bullshit. Oh, how about just somebody reach out? Hey, how you doing? Or, hey, mm-hmm. good morning. You okay? You hold the door for somebody. Is that hard? Like, take two seconds. The world's, yeah, there's a lot going on. We're all going through a lot. Every single person, you know. Yeah. And so, and a lot of the people that, you know, uh, the desperate hell I spike pick a fence, you, they're, usually they're the worst. But that's the thing. There's Everyone has stuff going on. But if we all, as each human being, can go out of our way, if it's something that you, they're not, you know, someone's like, well, I would never do that. Because then someone did say to me, they're like, well, what if she was crazy? And I was like, if she was crazy, she was crazy. And I guess God wanted me dead. I don't know. I don't think about things like that. I saw that she was hurt or, or muddy. And I figured it looks like she maybe fell. But if we all could do that and all of us could like, th- that is where the change needs to happen. So many people are so in their own world and they are not thinking about others. And and the kids are really what is going to be getting the hurt the most. And, you know, as I mean, we've talked about this because I think it's always, you know, the world has always gone through stuff. Like I had someone that I was ba- that I babysat their their family. She said I would just never want to be raising kids now. This was like a year or two ago, and I said to her, I said, Lisa, I said I understand what you're saying, but every generation has gone through stuff. There's nine eleven. There's wars. Every generation has gone through stuff. It's not that it's harder for me to raise my kids now than it was for you to raise your kids back in the day, right? It, but we if we all need to be better. I do feel that 
things are way more egocentrical. People are so much more for themselves. And I don't know, as, as I've gotten older, I just noticed it more or it really is. This is what's happening now. Um, and, you know, there's a, a different worth ec- a work ethic than I see. I mean, one of, one of my oh. kids teams, like the, half of the kids are not showing up for practice anymore because they're losing. Like, oh. I'm sorry. Can, what, what, you you made a commitment to a team. You fucking show up. Like I don't get that. Like so, I don't know if it's just where I am in life that I'm seeing this, or it's always been like this. But I think everyone just needs to do a little better. Everyone needs to be better than they are, and they need to do. They need to not just think about themselves and what they're going through. And I know, and and you say this sometimes. The people that are going through the most can't look outside because, you know. So you you have to though. People have to give. I mean, it makes me fucking crazy. Oh, the, the, you know, the you just t- talked about, you know, you made a commitment to, to the team not showing up. You know, we're letting people and, ki- you know, kids get away with what they're yeah. doing. You know, um, you talked about, um, you know, someone said, you know, what if that person was crazy? All right. You're you got you know that's something to me right there has trauma and issues that they haven't dealt with because that's their first response. Yeah. So that's that you know that's your way of getting around it. You know that you've got your own you've you got things going on there. You know it's it's raising you know participation ribbons. Take your ribbon and fucking shove it up your ass because there's no participation ribbons. Life isn't participation. You got to fucking, you got to fight for your girlfriend. You got to fight for a job. That's, that's, uh, that's how life goes. You know, mm-hmm. I, I walked in one of my teams yesterday. I said, Hey, you don't, some of you don't like me. I don't care. Some days you're not going to let, you know, you're not going to let your boss, your coworker, but you got to respect it. Yeah. And you got to learn how to deal. And that's, that's, that's life. That's what this is about. Like the real, it's not easy to, you know, it's, we are sheltering, you know, um, our kids, you know, so much. And then when they step in the, to the real world, they're like, oh my God, what <laughs> the fuck is this? You know, oh, uh, you know, so-and-so, it was grade seven or, you know, um, the girl I was dating her daughter is, no, at five, science fair. No. All right. We have six third places. No, we don't. We have one third fucking place. Oh, that stuff makes me nuts. So when you end up third or fourth uh, in that job interview and you still don't have a job living at home, okay, we're that. We're creating that. You know? Yeah. We're creating that for the kids. You know, and uh, you were talking about earlier is right now I feel that the, the adults are in the worst mental health p- position um, than, than anybody. And that's why it's falling down on the kids. Cause they're not taking of it. You know, it's, yeah. I've, I've found, I don't know about you, you know, is that I found that some of the first, uh, generation, um, people from other countries, you know, Eastern European that I've found are very, you know, obviously not too, too mental health or, you know, and not very good on, you know, on the communication, or asking for help from outside, so so they keep it in, and not, you know I find them struggling the most. Yeah, you know, we got to talk. I don't mm-hmm. care who it is. Is it your dog? Is it a fucking pet squirrel? Is it Elvin Simon Theodore? Doesn't matter. Right. You've got to talk. You know you don't. Ha- you a lot of times you don't need to hear anything back, but you got to talk. And the longer we we hold it in, and how many marriages uh, I've seen you know recently go oh, because. Yo, know, she won't get help or he won't get help or there's no communication or, you know, this or this or, you know, um, I, the pain in the world and people's every day, it's, it's just, it, it, it's sad. And, you know, I'm always here to help anybody I can. I know that. And I know you are. And we can, you know, we're only two people, but we can do what we can do. No, and it's true. And it is. And again, it's, I think a lot of people, it brings it back to the shame or the non understanding. They don't think that people are all going through the same sort of stuff. And, and really when you come down to it, even if it, it's not apples to apples, there is something similar in everyone's, you know, in, in, in the way like trauma or things like something that has happened to you. You're not the only one, 
right? Mm-hmm. And and I'm and I'm going to take it back to like you know in motherhood when you when you first become a mother and you're like oh my god what what is going on and and when you start talking to other moms that are going through the same thing you're like oh my god okay I'm not crazy okay this feels so much better wow, 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 wow. and just it- careful. <laughs> But it's the same thing, even as a new dad, you know, like, like, okay, your wife is now a different person because they just had this baby and they're not this fun loving person. And it's hard on a marriage. And it's like, wait a second, but you're talking to another dad friend and they're like, oh, my wife's going through it too. Okay. Let's, there's different things that happen. But if you talk about them, you make it, it's, it's, you make it okay. And it's like, okay, let's speak about this and let's, we're, we're in this together. Let's understand. It's the understanding, which we talk about a million well, times. And though, and that goes, you know, I, I think I say 95, 90% of, you know, relationships are, are fake. Cause are you talking about it? You know, bells will be, you know, I'm struggling. If you're married to that person, you should be able to, you should know everything. You know, mm-hmm. the past, you know, how many people I slept with. Like, if you love me, you, you, you know, we all have a past. Oh, I'm just going to yeah. close it. It didn't happen. Come on. Yo, you know, I asked somebody the other day, I'm like, what's your wife's love languages? He goes, what are those? Right. <laughs> I'm a fucking dumb Canadian farmer. What the fuck? The hockey po- what? what did you just say? Like, Yes, you guys are crazy, but it's it's talking it out and understanding. Yeah. Like, I'm very, you know, probably being married to me would have been like, what the fuck? Because I didn't understand myself with the dyslexia. You know, so it's having, you know, in ADHD we talk about, it's, it's the talking through it. And we all change. And if you're not communicating with a, your, your, your uh, spouse or whatever, you know, talking through things as we all change, how, how are they supposed to know? So that's, that's yeah. where, you know, how many women, uh, I mean, I say yes, but I meant no. No, like, I'm not, I don't fucking read minds. You need to communicate and we can't. You need to communicate. And, and as we grow, we evolve and we change. You, be- you better, you better. Because if right. not, you're, 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 you're even the worst place you are. So, you know, as you were, you're not the same woman right now as you were 20. You should no, be. I am not. Uh-huh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but it's, you, you should be changing. And if you're married, you should be changing together. Because that means two different things. You have two different people. Yeah. No. And, that's, and that's where the communication, but remember, I, and I said this to you, and I think I even sent you this, uh, there was like a quote and I thought it was really interesting because I'm all, I'm all mm-hmm. about communication um, and, and the questions and, and making sure everyone's understanding stuff, but it is, you can be communicating, but the other person is not comprehending. So it is a very different thing. And that's where having an open relationship talking about, okay, like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, is it okay? You heard me, but did you hear me? And that is such a, I mean, that's in, in everything in life, not just relationships, right? It's like, it's in, in everything in work, in, in business, in, um, in, in life and friendships. I mean, it's all like, okay, I know I just said this. So, oh, I feel great, but wait, does that person, under, did they comprehend what you said? So you feel like you're doing your job, but they're not comprehending, but it, you have to have that whole opened communication. Well, and you know, I've had to learn because I've been so different. I've had to learn. I left home so early. Yeah, I always say, you know, I, I'm thinking, all right, am I talking to a Canadian or American? Okay. <laughs> I'm here in the U.S. And I, okay, I'm talking Canadian. So we're going to talk kilometers. We're going to talk Celsius, right? We're going to talk liters. All right. I'm talking to my buddy in Finland. What are we talking? You know, Everybody learns differently Mm -hmm. and you have to learn how they learn. Do you know, um, you know, I had dinner with, uh, um, what's what we call it? Uh, no, and Matt and, um, you know, I said to him, did you guys sit in your boardroom and you have 12 different people there that you're pitching to, you know, they all learn differently. You need to know how you need to learn how they each learn. I'm like, because if not, you're 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 trying to pitch, you know, um, whatever that is. You're trying to pitch this deal to them, but they're you know, you and I sitting there learning completely different. So I said, you should go back around after they all introduce themselves. 
you know, um, ask them each a question before you get started. Ask them a question so questions. you can figure out how, yeah, so shit, how they learn. So then after the meeting, you might be able to go and, okay, you know, Julia learns this way. Yo, know, with, with that right question, you might be able to get more information to be able to close that deal. Well, because there's a connection. And I always say you're like one question away from a different life. You could ask Ooh. the right question at the Ooh. right time at the at the right person and something could come out of it that you never even expect because you were there you were acknowledgeable you asked a question so i'm going to stop us though oh go ahead that's an interesting quote isn't that good i like when it's stuff yeah yeah you got got me going but but it's true think about it you can be one question away from a different life Because who are you asking that question to? What connection do you make because of that question? 